Mercedes have never been very glamorous, but now Mercedes wants to revive this neglected niche with this, the CLA, a car so stylish it might just change the way we think about small saloons. Let's hope so. The CLA is based on the A-Class hatchback, but its sleek lines come straight from the larger CLS. It's one of the most aerodynamic cars on the road, and one of the most eye-catching. CLA prices start from around £24,500, a hefty £3,000 more than the equivalent A-Class. Style doesn't come cheap then, and the CLA 220 diesel that I'm driving today costs nearly £30,000. For that you get 168 brake horsepower and 0-60 in about 8 seconds, so it's reasonably quick, but there's a surprising amount of clattery diesel noise if you put your foot down. Mercedes claims an impressive 62.8 miles per gallon for the 220 diesel. That's much better than any of the three petrol engines, none of which can top 50 mpg. However, the A-Class diesel hatchback fell short of Mercedes figures in our more realistic fuel economy tests. All CLAs come with a seven-speed dual-clutch auto, and while it's not the most quick-witted gearbox, its laid-back character suits this diesel engine well. And let's be honest, nobody buys a Mercedes with a manual gearbox anyway. Inside, the CLA feels worthy of its premium price tag. All models come with a media system that allows you to display apps from your phone on the central screen. But the real highlight is all the safety kit. A radar emergency braking system is standard, as is a tension assist, which monitors your driving and warns you if you're getting tired. Here in the front, the CLA is fairly comfortable, but climb into the back and you're paying the price for that elegant shape. I'm five foot eight and I've got virtually no extra headroom here. Contrary to what you might expect, the CLA's boot is actually bigger than the A-Class hatchback, but this narrow opening makes it far less practical. You won't be squeezing a chest of drawers in here. Which measures boot space for every car in our test lab? Click the link to find out more about how we test. Now the A-Class got a lot of stick about its ride quality, not least from us. And the CLA, well it's much the same. This car's actually fitted with the standard comfort suspension, but on broken up country roads like these, the ride really is quite jarring. It's definitely one to try before you buy. Unlike other Mercedes saloons, most CLAs send power through their front wheels. The fact that the car is effectively being pulled rather than pushed may not sound like a big deal, but it means less feedback through the steering wheel and less poise when cornering than a regular Mercedes C-Class, let alone a BMW 3 Series. And for a car that looks so sporty, that's a shame. The CLA is far from perfect then. It's expensive, there's not much room in the back, and the ride is rock hard. Despite that, I'm going to take my rational witch hat off for a minute and say that this is still a desirable car. A C-Class at near enough the same price is better, but only a CLA will make your neighbours feel jealous and make you feel special. And you could never say that about a Vauxhall Belmont. Click here to read our first drive of the CLA, or read our full lab test reviews for the Mercedes A-Class and BMW 3 Series. Taking on Audi, BMW and Mercedes is no easy task. So the new Lexus IS does things a bit differently. That means a hybrid instead of the usual diesel engines, plenty of standard equipment, plus angular, very Japanese styling. But it's still chasing the same customers, so can it beat the Germans at their own game? The new IS comes as a four-door saloon only, and with a choice of two engines, the petrol IS250 or hybrid IS300H. Prices for the 250 start at around £26,500, 
but you'll need to part with £3,000 more for the hybrid we're driving today. If you thought hybrids were just for eco-warriors, think again. The combined output of this hybrid engine is about the same as a BMW 325 diesel. The instant torque of the electric motor gives you really punchy acceleration around town, and it's near silent at low speeds too. Hybrids achieve very low emissions in the EU tests. So low, in fact, that the IS300 SE actually qualifies for free car tax. Official fuel economy is 65.7 miles per gallon, but the smaller Lexus CT hybrid fell short of its figures in our more realistic tests. Click the link below to find out more. The hybrid's very refined if you're just cruising around, but it does get noisy if you accelerate hard. This automatic gearbox holds the engine at constant revs, which can make it sound a bit droney, although it's not as bad as some of the cheaper Toyota hybrids. Inside, the IS is more reserved, with high quality materials providing a premium feel. Check out these touch sensitive heating controls. Unfortunately, I just can't get on with this Lexus media system. This mouse style controller here is really difficult to use while driving, and you often have to navigate several menus to perform quite simple tasks. You've got to love this parking navigation service though. It searches all the car parks in your area and tells you which ones have free spaces and how much they cost. The boots are similar size to the 3 Series, although you only get a tyre repair kit rather than a proper spare wheel in the hybrid. Like its main rivals, the Lexus is rear wheel drive and it feels quite sporty from behind the wheel. Crucially though, it also rides really well. There's also an active sound control system that plays engine noise through the stereo speakers. But while it makes the car sound louder, it doesn't really make it sound any sportier. Lexus is known for its reliability, but we carry out the biggest owner survey in the UK. Click the link below to find out more. Low emissions make the hybrid the obvious choice for company car drivers, but don't rule out the IS250 petrol if you're buying with your own money. It's £3,000 cheaper, which goes a long way to making up for those higher fuel bills. The IS Hybrid offers diesel levels of fuel economy and superb refinement. It isn't quite as good to drive as the benchmark BMW, but you do get more for your money. So while it isn't perfect, the IS makes a strong case for daring to be different.